This video is going to show you how to organize your GitHub repos and why you might want to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and I've got a container that I'm already building on that I need to do this for. Then I'm also going to show you how to quickly configure a new account so that you can use all your favorite things. So here we have uh, a Docker repo that I have created. Um, so I'm on, I'm on TeamX, I'm running in a VM, uh, I'm on a system and I have Docker running over here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, hey, how you doing, Bill? We're going to do docker exec it amazing woo bash. We're going to run bash on this, this container that's been set up and had the stuff in it. It puts me in as root. And then I've already created a new account over here. So I'm going to go to that account, rvx rob uh, dash uh, gh test three. And as you can see, there's no configuration here. There's nothing here at all. And you're like, well, how do I, what's the quickest way to stand up, you know, it's a tech term, um, my environment here, right? So I can do this pretty quickly by, first of all, creating a similar directory structure to that, the one that I have used before. So the way you do that is I make a directory called repos. You could do lowercase for many years I did. Uh, the repos is just left over from when I used to use graphic desktop Linux, um, and it's built into my bash RC now, so uh, it's still uppercase. Next, we make uh, a GitHub directory because we organize our content in our repos based on the domain that you're on. And I want to emphasize this. It's very important to do this because then you don't have problems with conflicts with your Git repos. Uh, you might have two things that want to have the same space, so that's why we do that. Next, we go into the GitHub repo, the, the first one, and inside of here, we're going to make another directory. I'm going to name it. Um, in this case, I'm going to make RWX Rob uh, because for reasons I'll, I'll get to in a minute. And then I'm going to cd into RWX Rob in here. So then you can see our path there, repos, github.com, RWX Rob. Now from inside of here, I don't have, I have the GitHub tool installed so I can do a git, a git clone, but a lot of times you're not going to have the GitHub tool installed. So you're just going to have to use git. So you can do a git clone and you can do, you don't even have to have an authenticated access. You can do the non-authenticated HTTPS uh, to get the repo. And I'm going to download my dot files. So there they come. And this is a read only copy of the directory. If I were to go in here and to change it, um, you know, if I were to try to attempt to change something, uh, you know, uh, change, and if I were to do, you know, a git uh, uh, commit dash a, wait, git commit, whoopsie, commit, um, it doesn't have completion or anything, so <laughs> I'm kind of hating it, uh, changed, uh, and, you know, I have to do all the other setup and everything, but even if I had that setup, I'm not going to bother with that right now. If I did a git push, it would fail, right? Because it's a read only. It doesn't have access to it. It'd have to have other access to it, but it's okay. It's good enough. It's good enough for now, because if you look at my setup directory, which we are not going to go through, I have created symlinks, which is a pretty standard way to do this, uh, to all of my files so that they're all here. Um, I've seen people make videos complaining about the use of symlinks for this kind of thing, and I still find it to be the easiest and clearest and, and something that I have the, the best control of. There's a bunch of tools that attempt to do what you want to do. Nothing is better than your own script. A lot of times, seriously, this is why you should learn how to script, because then you can make your own modifications and manage your own dot files as you want to. You're not going to be, you know, uh, constantly shoehorning a tool that somebody else made to do what you want. So this is one of those cases where I would make a strong argument that dot files, I'll do a separate video on dot files, but this is one of those cases where I, I do really believe that you should take the time to create your own most popular system for this kind of stuff. So then I run the setup tool and we get a bunch of stuff. Okay. And it didn't show up. Um, and it's then saying here, you should probably authenticate with GitHub, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do that. We're going to get to this step right here in a second. But, but, you know, Mr. Rob, what happened? I don't see anything here, right? Rob, nothing, nothing's happening. Well, that's because you need to start up your new shell. Don't log out of the terminal and log back in. That's stupid. Just do exec bash dash L. It's because you want a login shell. And the exec, if you don't know what exec is, if you don't, if you haven't heard of exec before, exec replaces the currently running process with the process that you are going to kick off. So all of its resources get taken over by it. 
This is very, very, very critical. It's very important. So that means any open pipes, any, any, um, in the environment, the variables are adopted in, um, the, it basically, it replaces the currently running. I've said it already. So you really want to get good with you on this because this is the fastest way for you to reinitialize uh, a shell using the thing. That, there's so many people who don't know how to do that. I should probably just do a video about that. Um, so, so there we go. Now we see we've got, you know, my favorite little, you know, prompt here, which by the way, does get smaller if the, if the prompt is a little bit, it does, it does not always on two lines. It only does that if it's above like 30 characters or so. If you want to understand where that is coming from, you can go look at the, at the PS, um, stuff inside of my bash RC, but that's not this video. This video is just how did I, how do I get an account set up and I'm done. I'm done. My friends, I'm done. I now have everything I cared about already set up. In fact, I still even have my fishies here. I'm pretty sure. Yep. There's my fishies. So this has been a very quick video about the method of, of creating, um, very quickly an account based on your a single original account using a dot files inside of a Docker container or anywhere. It could have been a VM or anything. I am that close to being up and running, uh, by just those few steps. And it took us a few minutes. I want to keep this video short. So I'll stop there and we'll do, I mean, from here I can go ahead and set up the credentials for this, like as I would in any other system to contact Git or, you know, whatever it is that I need to set up uh, access to. Bye.